So if you watch our videos, you probably see that we build a lot of different engines here at Moto IQ. Uh, we also do exclusive engine programs for a number of different high performance companies. One of the companies that we have an exclusive for, for the Ford Duratec V6, is Raiden Performance. Um, we do a number of things from custom engine builds to very basic. So today we're going to go over what goes in in a good solid basic uh, Duratec engine build. The first thing we do with a Raiden motor is bring the motor in for teardown and inspection. Uh, this way we know the extent of the engine's condition what needs to be replaced, what can be reused. Uh, we'll do all this figuring out and uh, Raiden will contact the customer to tell them uh, the scope of the build and uh, about what the approximate cost would be. So the first thing we do is uh, we get the block. Now we'll do a dimensional check of the block and see exactly what needs to be done. Um, we need to do this because we need to know things like what size piston uh, needs to be ordered and stuff. What we don't want to do is just arbitrarily bore the block out huge for some size, but we try to remove the least amount of material possible. Um, the Duratec block is actually a pretty good block. Uh, we really like the design. Like one of the coolest things is that it uses a bed plate for the bottom end. Most engines have like just main caps that retain the main bearings, but uh, on the Duratec, the whole bottom end of the engine is this one solid piece, um, and there's four bolts per each cap. So there's a lot of rigidity here, so the, uh, the bottom end can uh, actually take a lot of abuse, and it's uh, very strong, very rigid. Like a lot of engines, when you start modifying them after they've run for a while, you see like fretting right here on the uh, parting lines of the cap and the block. And this is because everything's actually flexing. Now it's going to take a lot of power to do that on, on one of these engines. So this is an inherently good design. The next thing when we machine the block, Raiden has invested in proprietary tooling. Now there's probably no other machine shop in the country that has a torque plate for the Duratec, but Raiden has paid us to design one and we use it. Now what the torque plate does is it distorts the block like it will be uh, when the cylinder head's bolted on. And uh, if you don't think that's a big deal, it actually is because the torque from bolting on the cylinder head can deflect the cylinder walls uh, on, on some engines as much as one and a half thou. Now that's almost your like half your piston to wall uh, clearance. Um, so with the torque plate, we can get the bores really round, really straight with the cylinder head bolted on. That means longer life, uh, less friction, longer lasting engine, better ring seal. It makes a significant difference. And this is like one of the cool things that sets the motor apart that we do for Raiden. Um, we also uh, precisely control the piston and wall clearance and the cylinder wall finish. This is something that a lot of other companies uh, mess up. In fact, this particular motor uh, was from one of Raiden's customers that another supposedly well-known engine builder had uh, built, and it only lasted 3,000 miles before it, it had trouble and it ended up in our shop. When we tore this motor down, uh, the piston the wall clearances were really, really off. Like, it was amazing that this thing could still run. And what that meant was this thing had low compression, burnt oil like crazy, and was super noisy like a diesel. Uh, we also looked at the bottom end and uh, the bearing clearances were off. Now, this is some of the stuff that could happen with an engine builder that maybe just sends things out and throws it together without measuring things. but. When we do something, everything's precisely machined, and we actually measure every single clearance in the entire engine. Um, so the block is carefully machined with a lot of precision, proper cylinder wall finish. The cylinder wall finish is critical for today's uh, pistons. In the old days, you had big old thick uh, ductile iron rings, and uh, they needed a rough finish. They weren't too picky about cylinder wall finish. Uh, but the modern engine uses um, more exotic low tension piston rings with, that are nitride or PVD coated. 
Now these need a very smooth, precise finish of a certain RA, and uh, we are capable of doing it. We also do plateau honing, which takes the peaks off the finish, so that gives a uh, easier surface for the uh, low tension rings to burnish into. A lot of machine shops really mess up the more sophisticated cylinder wall finishes that you need for today's high performance motor. The stock Ford crank is actually a pretty good part. It's nice and strong, stiff. It has good uh, journal overlap. Uh, this can be reused for all but the most extreme performance engines. So what we do is um, we measure all the journals to see if they're within spec. If they're not, we can grind them undersized and use an oversized bearing. Uh, the other things we do is we chamfer all the oil holes for uh, better flow and uh, to reduce the risk of um, scuffing a bearing. And we also do a precision dynamic balance of the crank. But overall, the stock crank is pretty good. You just got to treat it carefully. Now we're going to get into some of the uh, more fun performance stuff. We use a special connecting rod that's made to our spec for uh, Raiden. The rod is a uh, beam type. It's made out of uh, 4340 uh, steel, which is a high nickel, really tough steel. And it uses really high strength bolts with about 180 PSI strength. This rod is plenty strong for uh, most high performance use. And we can build an even stronger rod if needed, although I think this can handle almost anything anybody could come up with. The pistons are very special too. Uh, these are a forged piston. Um, we use 2618, which is a really tough alloy. Um, it's a strut type piston, so it's lightweight, uh, stiff and strong. It has a generous pin boss, and we use a piston's pin that is fairly thick wall um, with a slight taper. Now a lot of people make mistakes and run a thin wall tool steel pin on an engine that's a turbo, like what this is going to be, but we use a slightly heavier, thicker wall pin. This reduces the likelihood of flex. When the pin flexes, it can gall inside the uh, pin boss of the piston. It could actually grab and spin the small bearing out of the, out, out of the rod too, so you don't want to do that. Generally, we build these engines for turbocharging and pump gas, so the compression ratio is 8.5 to 1. Um, if you're going to run E85 or something like that exclusively, we could do uh, co custom compression ratios. If the engine was always going to be running on ethanol, for instance, I'd probably build it, build it at 10 to 1. But for most customers, 8.5 to 1 works the best. Um, you know, it's a nice dish. We still have quench pads, which line up with the quench pads of the cylinder head, helps reduce detonation, gives you a better burn. You can see the really thin uh, ring grooves for the low tension rings. And we have lateral gas porting here, which helps the low tension rings seal really well. You can see the lateral gas ports, you know, on top here. Uh, we also have a pressure equalization groove in between the number one and number two compression ring. This kind of acts like a buffer to make sure your second ring gets some pressure to help it seal, um, especially at high RPMs. Uh, the second ring um, has a little bit of a channel behind it to kind of help give any oil that the oil rings miss a little place to go. And the oil rings, um, it's a thin rail, low friction oil ring, and there's like a lot of drain back holes. Um, it also has, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but you have double pin oilers. So a lot of the oil scraped off the cylinder walls from the oil ring actually feed the piston pin and help lubricate it. It's a really cool feature that not too many pistons have, but we incorporated, incorporated into this piston design. So the rods and pistons are exclusive parts that we designed for Raiden. But these parts you can get off the shelf. Uh, on the engine, we use king bearings like we use in a lot of our builds. Uh, these are just off the shelf parts you can get from king. And the valve train parts are from Supertech. Uh, you can get those straight from Supertech. Uh, now Supertech ma uh, makes this, the valve springs and the titanium retainers. Um, these valves are actually really special. Uh, they're 
the exhaust valve is Inconel. Inconel is an exotic alloy that's really good at withstanding high temperatures. So it's critical on the turbo engine. Uh, they run really hot on the exhaust side. Uh, some other features are um, this tulip contour of the valve stem and the valve head. Now since uh, the exhaust gas is exiting the chamber, this smooth tulip shape uh, actually helps uh, flow and in improves the ability of the exhaust gas to exit the combustion chamber. On the intake, uh, these are made out of stainless and they're nitrided. Uh, the nitriding helps the wear on the stem, makes everything slippery. It also helps for uh, wear on the seating surface. Um, there's some other tricks on these valves. Uh, the intake valve has a tulip-shaped contour and a reduced stem. Now when uh, the airflow is coming into the cylinder, the, um, the tulip shape and the reduced stem actually helps flow. So this is the opposite of the exhaust valve. So these valves actually flow better than stock, as well as being more durable. So on this engine, we're running the stock cams, but if you want bigger cams, they're available and contact Raiden and we'll talk about what cams will work the best for your application. Finally, there's the cylinder head. Now, since these are primarily turbocharged engines, we don't do crazy head work because on the turbo motor, it's not super necessary. But what we do do is we pay a lot of attention to improve the low lift flow of the uh, cylinder head, starting with the valves, and I explained about how those work. Uh, the next thing we do is we cut the seats using a new and valve machine. Now, most of you are familiar with um, regular valve jobs, like maybe what the, uh, the Surdy machine does, you use a cutter with the three angles in the cutter and you just cut the seats like that to do your three angle valve job. Now that used to be the standard of what was best for high performance, but we use a new and CNC valve seat cutting machine that does a tremendously better job. What the new one does is it cuts a smooth radius up to the 45 seat then another smooth radius uh, plunging pretty deep into the port. So instead of like sharp angles, you just have a nice smooth contour, which flows a lot better than your conventional valve job. Uh, since it also goes pretty far into the, um, the pocket of the port, it also does a lot of the work of what pocket porting used to do. Um, you know, on most um, kind of solid rebuilds of these engines. That's all we do. But optionally, uh, we could hand blend from the bottom cut of the new one into the, the bowl. We don't want to remove a lot of material, but that cleans things up really nicely and it gives you maybe a little bit of power. Um, some of the other things we do is uh, when we measure everything, uh, you may need uh, new valve guides and new seats. Um, if, if you do need that stuff, we'll, we'll replace that with uh, premium stuff. Like we'll use hardened seats that are good for unleaded gas, uh, kind of like OEM quality. For the valve guides, we'll use um, uh, like bronze, which is a good slippery long wearing guide. Um, and that's about it. I mean, these aren't really aren't that bad heads. Uh, they were designed by Cosworth and the shape and everything is basically pretty good. Um, the only thing is maybe they have a little core shift and that's why you may want to pay us a little money to clean up where the new one can't get to. Core shift means um, kind of flaws that happen when in casting. Now when these things are cast, um, they're sand cast and there's a sand mold that makes the basic shape. But for the interior things like ports and water jackets, they have little things called cores and they're little molded sand deals that actually go into the sand mold and uh, they give you all the hollow points. So you set up your, your, uh, your casting in, in like a core box with all the, your sand and the little cores. Then you pour in your molten aluminum and when it cools, uh, it goes in the shaker and all the sand disintegrates and comes out and uh, there you have your head. Now core shift is when the aluminum's going in, um, it kind of makes those little cores buoyant for a few, 
fractions of a second so they could possibly move. So that's how you get core shift. And it's usually slight variations in how the ports and the port pockets are. Um, so every head is slightly different. Uh, modern heads, uh, redu they've reduced core shift to where it's very little, but this is kind of an older motor. Uh, so there is core shift. Uh, to deal with the core shift, we would be doing a little hand work. And that's an option, not entirely necessary, but it's probably good for a few horsepower. Uh, that doesn't matter for anybody. You know, it's a turbocharged engine. You could probably turn up your boost by one pound and make up that difference. But some people want to have everything and we can give it to you. So now we can talk about some of our popular options. If you want to go this route, contact Raiden and they'll gladly add it to your quote. But some of the cool things that we can do are vapor honing. A lot of these engines are oxidized, they, uh, you know, they're used engines. And vapor honing makes the surface look like a brand new casting. Now it's not sandblasting that leaves like a porous finish. It actually, uh, you can see it here. It's like a kind of a glossy, really clean, really new casting look. It doesn't leave fingerprints. Basically makes it uh, like new again in appearance. Uh, the other things we can do that we highly recommend is uh, cryogenic treating and WPC surface finishing. These things add a lot to the durability of the engine and maybe give it a little bit of performance, but we really believe it helps durability quite a bit, as much as 50%. Also, if you want to build a really sick motor for your Noble or something, and like maybe you're building a Noble race car, uh, we can also do things like dry sump lubrication systems, uh, the strongest possible bottom end that could take really high revs, and uh, shoot, the list can go on and on. Um, basically, the, this engine is a really good engine for big horsepower builds because the block has such good integrity with this bed plate. So the, almost the sky's the limit. Um, you can discuss with Raiden, and we'll work with Raiden to build the engine of your dreams. So if you want to build a badass V6 Duratec, you can contact Raiden via sales at RaidenPerformance.com or you can call them on this phone number on the screen. So if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to give us likes, be sure to subscribe, and until next time, we'll see you later.